Welcome to the top 10 Digimon that aren't in the game. And uh, this is for Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth Complete Edition. Originally, I came up with this concept as a joke because I thought it'd be funny if I was just like, oh, look at this Digimon, he's not in the game. Then I realized that's a real concern. Uh, so not only did I do a list of top 10 Digimon that would be cool to have, but uh, I made custom stats, attacks, and abilities for them. So let's go over that. Number 10 is Rafflesiamon. Uh, it's a 25 memory data plant because we don't really have very many of those in a metagame, let alone a 25 memory with three equip slots, so that's kind of fun. Uh, we got bulky stats, a lot of SP, kind of low defense because uh, with the ability, Miraculous Flower, which reduces all damage received by 10%, if it had really good defense as a base, it'd be kind of be really hard to deal with, especially with like three equip slots, but obviously you can mitigate that with uh, stat distributions if you want to. Its SIG skill is Wasellin, which is 40 SP, magic attack, 140 plant to all foes, absorbs 20% to HP, so the HP absorption obviously helps with the uh, defensive nature of the Digimon, but the truth is you don't actually have a lot of plant-type attacks in the game. Rosemon Burst Mode being one of the best plant Digimon actually has a light damage attack, so having plant damage is pretty neat, especially as an int attack AoE with so much power. And like I said, you don't see very many high dam or high memory data Digimon, let alone high memory plant Digimon. So this would be kind of a cool Digimon to have. Next up is Sakuyamon Miko mode, and she has exact same stats as Sakuyamon. Uh, she'd kind of be like a form change, I guess. The interesting part is in her ability, Miko mode, which uh, reduces magical damage received by 15%. So this is sort of the contrast the original Sakuyamon, which just gives you 15% int in the game. And uh, if you don't know, that's actually extremely good in the metagame. The 15% into bonus passive is a very, very good thing. So uh, her SIG skill is also just a clone of Sakuyamon SIG skill because the undoing stat boost is so important for metagame against uh, mental charge field spam. So I figured that uh, this Sakuyamon is pretty much Sakuyamon. The difference is that she just focuses on helping teams who are weak to magic damage by reducing the magic damage they take rather than helping magic damage teams as a whole. Next up is Kulumon, and he's largely based off the Kulumon that you would get in Dawn and Dusk for beating Story Mode. Uh, he has 999 SP and really bad for other stats. He's kind of... I, I designed him to be a little bit playable in uh, PvP, but mostly for PvE. Uh, you see his ability, Digiantelikia, uh, maximizes EXP earned in battle. So it's like Platinum Numemon, but by having one of them, your EXP becomes 999999, whatever the max would be. Uh, grinding in this game is really not a big deal, but I figured why not just have a little fun thing like this that just makes grinding super easy. So his SIG skill is Kulumon Prayer, and that is not a typo. It is a 500 SP SIG skill, and that is because it completely restores HP and SP and removes all abnormal statuses to one party member. Now, we have 999 SP, so we can use this thing once, and if we get SP somehow or else, like Marine Angemon, we can use it again, but this is obviously because it's meant to be just a fun little thing, and it's not really meant to be a PvP staple, but, you know, why not let it be played in PvP, kind of like Platinum Maimon is. Also, I figured that he wouldn't evolve from anything, just like how in uh, Dawn and Dusk he doesn't, you just get him as a little gift at the end. So here's the attacks he'd learn leveling up, just generic support stuff. Next up is Victory Greymon, who overall is pretty defensive with a nice uh, physical bulk to him. Uh, his ability Victory Shield would increase his attack and defense by 10%. Maybe you could see him being played on like a Grand Locomon style team, kind of like Imperial Drummond Dragon Mode is, but for physical. But for that reason, because he's physical, he probably would have a. Uh, he'd have less energy, so you'd probably see him less. Although his attack, Trident Gaia. Pretty cool one, I thought I'd say so myself. 110 fire damage to one foe. Ignores bad matchups, so that would mean like he can hit Datas for neutral damage. It also increases his defense by 10%. Uh, Marcus Damon punch people. He's like, uh, like Biel Komon, uh, Biel Starmon. So she's largely inspired by Biel Zelmon, but being a little bit cheaper and having three equip slots, being a dark virus in this game and having three equip slots is a godsend because it means you can have 90% damage reduction to light damage, which is super common and prevalent against dark virus Digimon. Well, Desperado raises her attack and crit by 10%, very similar to Dark Drummond's skill. And her attack, Fly Bullet, is very similar to Beelzemon's skill, but opting for six physical attacks instead of eight because she has two three-barrel guns. So that's the idea there. Obviously, she's going to be a bit weaker than Beelzemon with her six skill because uh, she's only 20 memory. She's not a demon lord.
But the truth about this game is, is that efficiency is a bit better than power, so because she's more efficient, she'd probably be a higher tier. Next up is Giga Seedramon. Shoutouts to Clem. One of his favorite Digimon is the Seedramon line. So this guy's a lot of fun. You'll notice his stats are pretty much just Metal Seedramon stats with 10 added to them. He has one less Eclipse slot and costs a little bit more, but that's because his support skill, Assault Landing Ship, is something that I thought about before. I thought it'd be kind of be a very interesting thing to implement into the game, and that's a, a support skill that decreases the memory of other Digimon in your party. So if you focus on a full water party, you'll probably get about 12 maybe 10 to 12 memory out of this because uh, you'd have to have like five water Digimon to maximize it. So it's not broken, but it's kind of a cool little thing. It'd make for some cool team comps for sure. His SIG skill is just his regular SIG skill when he was Metal Seedramon, but boosted by a bit more. So Giga Sea Destroyer. It'd be pretty good for the metagame to hit uh, Shine Greymon Burst Mode with. Now we got Grimmon. Of course, he's got other forms, but I decided to put the more iconic form in if I was just going to put one in. So he's a neutral virus because he's kind of made of weird data, so we don't have to make him dark virus, make him weak to light as dark virus usually is. Light vaccines are such a common attacking combo in this game. His stats are pretty well-rounded, kind of defensive. He's got one equip slot, and you'll see why in a second. Sometimes one equip slot is a decent way to balance something. So he's got chrono DNA as his support skill. It will increase penetrating damage by 30%. Kind of nice overall, but the real meat of the Digimon is with chrono DSR. A 30 SP interpenetrating strong neutral attack on one foe ignores enemy items, so this means no Memi Tan, no Master Barrier. He also has a 50% chance of dotting target. Now, I've I thought about, like, what if Belthamon Rage Mode's ability was he ignores enemy items? That would make him pretty good. So, we're kind of, in a way, implementing that here for Grimmon. I think he'd be a pretty niche pick, especially with one item slot and having just mediocre stats overall, but I think it'd be pretty cool to see. I mean, you could definitely, because you can ignore Memi Tan, you could uh, theoretically get to a point where you'd be pretty threatening to enemy Sakuya Mons, so it'd be neat to see. All right, next we got All Force Vidramon Future Mode. Future Mode was an ultra-level upgrade he had in the manga, and uh, of course with uh, Hacker's Memory, Speed was severely nerfed from Cyber Sleuth's original release, and All Force was one of the most nerfed Digimon along with Shine Greymon Burst Mode. The difference between them is Shine Greymon Burst Mode is still top tier, All Force Vidramon became bottom tier. So let's fix them. Uh, he has a cannon way to become stronger, so why not use it, right? So I made his stats overall pretty much just better in general, but uh, you know, having that nice extra chunk of attack is going to be important. But look at his speed, 298. We're just saying, screw it. Let's just give this guy what he had in the first game, kind of. Of course, in the first game, you could have so much speed that you could move three times before your opponent even got to move months, but we're not quite doing that here. We're just giving him enough speed to probably move more often than the average Digimon. And Hacker's Memory at its speed falls off a lot more based on how the formula works. So it's not going to be as broken as it was in the original game, but it's still kind of a fun nod to it. Plus, possibly gives him a little bit of a niche and a gimmick that actually lets him do something. So his support skill is a lot like Beelzemon's, uh, Beelzemon base mode, who would raise his attack every turn, but we're just raising our speed every turn by 15%, we're not losing any HP by doing it. Speed is the most nerfed stat from the original game, and it falls off the more you have of it, so having a lot of speed increase is not going to be a big deal. It'd be kind of neat to apply it to your whole team, though, because that's how support skills work in this game. Alright, Shining V-Force, 100 light damage to all foes, always hits, removes all abnormal statuses, so that's going to apply to all force of Vidramon. Uh, kind of like how Valdermon's ability works, and I guess that could be in case they try to poison you or lower your stats. Next up is All Force V Saber. Both of these are upgrades to his original attacks. He had two of them because he's a Royal Knight. Uh, this is just three physical attacks, doing ten more wind damage than the original one, uh, because the original was was just mediocre enough to not really do anything. So let's just give it a little bit of a boost. The third extra physical attack really does make it a go in though. So uh, I think it'd be pretty interesting to see him spamming stuff and uh, running around the battlefield. Kind of a nice. Uh, middle ground between how he is now and how he was. Next up is a fan favorite of me and all my friends IRL, and that's a Wendigo Mon. That's because of that cool movie. So, of course, we're going to make him a wind virus. Uh, wind, because in many games he is allied of wind, and he has a lot of wind-based abilities. Also, being a dark virus would make him just so much weaker against the metagame. Uh, you know, as a champion level, we're going to give him one equip slot just like usual. We're going to make his stats pretty beefy because he's going to be an 8 cost after all. So his ability destroyed voice, inspired by his ability to teleport places by turning into the wind, decreases Digimon's wait time when changing. So the uh, community term for that is CD or cooldown. I don't think there's an official word for it in game. But the idea is, is that if you switch somebody in while it's his turn, they will have their CD, let's say like halved or something. 
I think it'd be kind of interesting add some high level gameplay to having an eight memory Digimon on your team who you could use to make Digimon come into the battlefield quicker or maybe even just cut down on CDs on really big attacks with some cool combos. I think seeing this used by some skilled players would be really cool to see. And then his sig skill is Cable Crusher. 30 SP, which is going to take up most of his SP pool, but it's an extra strong dark attack on one foe, death penetrating, a 50% chance of panic in target. I mean, this is just kind of because I like him a lot. I think he's a big, bulky Digimon, could throw out some powerful attacks, but uh, with having these stats he has, an extra strong pen move is not going to do too much anyway. So I think it's just kind of cool to have him being this powerhouse that he is. Now, number one, it's really sad that he's not in the game considering that his counterpart is, and that's Apollomon. So I made him pretty much a uh, copy of Dianamon in many ways, where he has three slots, 20 memory, and his SIG skill. I mean, pretty much the same thing, but uh, I give him a pretty interesting SIG skill, I think. It hits twice, 65 damage of light and 65 damage of fire. Uh, all foes. It'd be kind of interesting, I think. Technically impossible to have 90% resistance to all of the attack by using guard DXs, but not people aren't really guard DX against fire anyway. Although light you do see. I just think it'd be a flavorful and interesting thing to do. Alright, honorable mentions to Kakuamon, Commandramon, Boncho Lilymon, Bloom Lordmon, Chronomon, and others I forgot or just didn't think of. If you have any cool ideas or designs, let me know in the comments because I'd love to see them. And as always, sub for spub.